Good morning. There we go. Turn me up a little. Give me some fire. Let's... Can I have everybody's attention, please? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Ministry. Uh, Jesus said in the scripture, just said it was noise that he was in the house, didn't it? So we know Jesus is here today. We're going to start out with prayer, and I'd ask Brother Josh Jones to lead us in prayer. If you would, bow your heads and honor the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. God, I ask that you quicken our spirits today. God, just be with us. Father, remind us that you're always holding us. Father, I thank you that you speak to us in many ways. Father, I thank you that every heart in here today is touched. Not just for their self, God, because if it's just for ourselves, what are we doing? But God, I ask that we're touched, that we can spill out on others. Fill us up, just like the vessels, God. Just like the vessels in the first miracle that you've done, God. Fill us up in an open vessel that was never meant to be contained, but it was meant to be poured out. Father, I thank you that you never stop loving. You never stop loving us. You never, you never give up on us. God, I thank you that you remind us that we're always held by you. Father, I thank you for this worship team. God, I thank you as they prepare to play and lead us in worship, God. And God, I thank you that you just get in their hearts. Father, let the people see you through them. Not just us here in the sanctuary, God, but the ones on Facebook, too. God, I ask that, that, that something through that Facebook wave, God, just draws them in and touches them right where they're at. God, that they know that, that you're there with them as well as you're here with us. And God, I thank you that, that you bless this place, you bless Pastor today. God, I ask you that you speak through him to speak to us. And God, on a real level, I just ask you just to quicken our spirits today to teach us things that maybe we have let slide. God, there's some things, like you've taught me this week, God, to listen in areas that maybe I, I just overlook. And God, I ask you that you, you teach us in areas that sometimes we're, we're stubborn in. God, sometimes we're just like old mules. We just don't want to go. We just don't want to do this or do that the way the master is trying to pull us that way or this way, God. But be our master and pull us. Teach us. Father, we, we will not resist the plow, God. Just hook it to us. Plow our hearts. Get us to a place today, God, right now during worship, God. Get us to a place that this seed that's about to be sown is, is ready. The ground is prepared. The soil, is, the soil has been fertilized. It's, it's been broke up. It's fine. It's ready to receive. It's not going to be, it's not hardened. God, I ask that our hearts are just, just to a place where the seed grows and it, it thrives. God, that this place, this place becomes a place of healing for the community, a, a hospital. God, that's what this is. It's a hospital. And God, I ask that you, you fix the wounded, the ones that everybody else said, well, they're not going to make it. But God, you said they can. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you, just like old machinery. A lot of people put it in the, they put it in the uh, fields and they, they put it in the back of the field. But God, you said it's still usable. You can, you can fix it. God, there's people, so many people in this community, God, that's been pushed aside. And God, I thank you. I thank you to this ministry the ones you have gathered, the ones you have called. God, are reaching out to the ones that have been pushed aside. And God, and you call them usable. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Well, welcome to Emmanuel Ministry. Thank you, Brother Josh. If we have any first-time visitors here that did not get a visitor's card when they came in, any first-time visitors out there that did not get a visitor's card when you first came in? All right. Did you get one, Kobe? Praise the Lord. I've got a few announcements here, and we'll get into it. Uh, I just want you to look at your neighbor right now before we get started and say, something good is going to happen to you today. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them that. All right. On Facebook, give us a hands-up emoji. And welcome our Spanish ones, Buenos Dias, Bano Vesto, Mineral Emmanuel, Deis Corno Nostro, saying something good is going to happen to you today in Spanish. Hallelujah. And we know that. Praise God for everybody here. A few announcements here. Uh, the church is open for sanctuary prayer each Sunday from 9 o'clock to 9.25 a.m. We have classes for all ages at 6.30 p.m. each Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. on Sundays. Roy Crane, if you can see the people we have here, it's really good. Roy Crane needs some more people who will be greeters. If you would like to open doors and smile and welcome people, see Roy Crane. Roy Crane, are you in here, Roy? He's out front probably greeting right now. So see, there's Roy right there. Hey, Roy, he's at the door. See Roy Crane, get involved. It's, it's, it's a blessing to get involved. Another thing, uh, follow-up for all the spring Agape Road Emmaus Walks. Flight will be Saturday, May 8th. The board will meet at 4, followed by a potluck meal at 5. The fourth day service will follow the meal. Is that here? And that's here at Emmanuel Ministry. Again, that's May the 8th, Saturday. This coming Saturday at 4. All right, Vacation Bible School will be Saturday, July the 24th, Wednesday, July the 28th. The time of day has not been set yet, but pastors wanted to announce the date so you could mark that on your calendar, July the 24th, Saturday through Wednesday to July the 28th. The food bank needs your used plastic grocery bags if you have some to spare, and you put them out front in the foyer there. There's a place between the two bathrooms. Uh, we have four graduating seniors this year. We have Gage Bird. Gage is over here. We also have Ethan Harlow graduating from Glasgow, Ethan back here, calm down, Ethan, calm down, and J.D. Morgan, J.D., and we also have Ashton Rock graduating from Hart County, so thank God for our graduates, hallelujah to the graduates, hallelujah, give my hand, yeah, yes, something good is going to happen to you today. Uh, Brother Rob and Jamie will have Children's Church for ages 3 to 9 after praise and worship today. We always like to thank Brother Rob and Jamie. We love them, and we thank them for what they do. Also, we have Thursday, May the 6th. Now, that's coming up. At 12 noon, we will meet at the Old Courthouse in Mumfordville for the National Day of Prayer. All are welcome. All right, that's Thursday, May 6th at 12 noon. Also, we have the School of the Prophets on Monday at 6.30, Sister Judy's house, and I have one more announcement for the deacons. Uh, there will be a brief deacons meeting immediately after church today in this room over here, please, okay? All right, we got those out of the way. If everyone would stand, please. I want to tell you something right now. My name is Two-Door Bucky. If you don't know, I'm blessed going in and coming out, okay? I changed it last week. I used to be the Lynn, but I'm Two-Door Bucky now. But I am. I'm blessed going in and coming out today, and you guys can be too. And you got to thank yourself when David was in a battle and he ran to take the food to his brothers. He said, is there not a cause? And then he said, this day, right? So we know this day can be the day for you as you worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. He said, this day I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed it to the carcasses. He said, oh, I ain't even telling you what I'm doing the next day. Just this day I'm getting ready to take care of it. And he said it five times in different languages, all towards him before he'd done it. So sometimes you've got to stir yourself up, okay? David stirred himself up, so we have to stir ourselves up in the most holy. And as we get into the worship, we know without a doubt, without a doubt now, that we have been delivered from anything in our life. Shake free from it, let go of it, and enter his presence today. And we will do that, hallelujah. How about some, oh, Samuel's back. Can I get a little thunder on that bass, Samuel? There you go. All right. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. All right, here we go. It's all yours, brother. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Not to put the brakes on here, but I want to read uh, want to read a little bit to you this morning before we get started. Um, you know, I think the I think the Lord's got a line up here today, and uh, it's uh, as they said, it's for your benefit. It's for your benefit. Luke eighteen one nine says, and he spake a parable. This is Jesus talking. He spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, <clears throat> Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? Amen. You know, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And he also says, he also says that we should come like little children. We should be like little children. There's another story that we were reading about the Canaanite woman that came to Jesus. Her daughter was demon-possessed. I read it just yesterday, but uh, she came to Jesus first, and Jesus basically... Uh, didn't have time for her. I'd missed this part before. She went to his disciples, and they came back to Jesus, and she just was, they were weary. They came back to Jesus. Hey, this lady is wearing us out. Would you please do something for her? Um, so the Lord, you know, the end of the story, the Lord does heal her daughter. She said, he said that uh, that the bread was not for the, little dogs he said even the little dogs get the crumbs from the table and he said he'd never seen such faith so i just want to tell you this morning that the altars are open this morning as we continue as we come to the lord as we come to him at the altar here there's going to be some folks that'll that'll meet you if you need prayer this morning uh the song we're singing this morning is titled god is awesome in this place and as josh said this place should be a hospital as he just prayed this morning this should be a hospital and it says uh, we seek his presence as we sing his praise there is power here for a miracle set the captive free make the broken whole amen jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted if you've got something going on in your life today we just want to let you know that these altars are open there's someone that will agree with you in prayer. The Bible says that one will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand to flight. He says, pray ye one for another. He says, prayers of a righteous man are powerful and they are effective. They accomplish much. Prayers of a righteous man are powerful and effective. The Lord set it up this way that we should pray one for another. Someone will meet you here today if you're going through something like this lady whose daughter was demon-possessed. It was a crisis. She wasn't leaving. She pursued Jesus. She knew he was her only hope, right? When he turned her away, she went to disciples, wore them out, just like the unjust judge. Um, we want you to come this morning. We want you to come this morning. Uh, now, here's the thing. The adversary will keep you away from the altar. Anybody here ever had a miracle at the altar when you came forward for prayer? Anybody in here ever went to the altar and the Lord met you there? The adversary will keep you, will keep you from coming here. If the ba his basic tactic is always the same. It's the same old, same old, same old. It's fear. It's fear. He will keep you from coming to the Lord because of fear. Well, nobody's up there. Well, who's looking at me? Who's watching? Uh, we just want you to know that we love you. The altars are open. If you've been dealing with something for a while, like the lady with the issue of blood, if you've been dealing with something for a while and you need some relief, there's somebody here that will meet you. We've got altar workers, folks, that will meet you here this morning to pray with you. But as Josh said, this is a hospital. Amen. 
here in this house. Amen. God is awesome in this place. Amen. Here in this house of the great King, we come together now to worship Him. This house is built on Christ our rock. It will not be shaken, not be shaken. God is awesome in this place. We seek His presence as we sing His praise. There is power here for a miracle. Set the captive free, make the broken whole. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome in this place. Here in this house of the great King, is He great? We come together now to worship Him. This house is built on Christ our Lord. It cannot be shaken, cannot be shaken. God is awesome in this place. Is He awesome? We seek His presence as we sing His praise. There is power here for a miracle. Set the captive free, make the broken whole. So awesome. God is awesome in this agree with that this morning do you believe that God is awesome do you believe that he would answer prayers he said ask seek and knock he said if you being evil would give good gifts to your children how much more would your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him amen do you believe he's a good God do you believe he would answer your prayers this morning amen he would give good gifts to those who ask him let's seek him today please amen let's seek the lord today amen if you've got a need let's seek him in prisoners chains with bleeding strife
today. We just thank you for who you are. We're thankful for who you are, Lord, that you are a way maker. Lord, it was by your stripes that we were healed. Surely he was crushed for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we were healed. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice, for your obedience even unto death, Lord. For you shed blood, Lord, blood of the new covenant. Amen. Shed for the remission of our sins, Lord. We just thank you for that.
hand is on your life today if you're in this place. He wants to speak to you. He wants to change you. He wants to bring beauty out of ashes. So if that's you in this place today, maybe this last year has been a very tough year on you. It's been very tough on everyone. But the Lord is here today and He wants to move. He wants to work in your life. It just takes you stepping out and receiving it. So Father, we're here to receive your spirit today. We just welcome you in Holy Spirit because you are worth it. We welcome you in this place because you are worth it all. To the ends of our days, we will praise you, Father, because you are worth every ounce of devotion. Till our very last breath, we will say that you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords and you will work miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. Do you believe it today? He is here today. He is here to work for you today. So even when you don't see it, he is working. Just sing it out to him. Just sing it out of yourself. Even when you don't see it, he is working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't 
Even when I can't see that he's working, he's still working. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we just don't see it, but he is working. And he's working in our midst today, Amen. you know. While you're here attending the things of worshiping God and doing the things that the Lord asks you to do, he's got a ways and means committee taking care of business for you. <laughs> he's able to make things happen for you, make you to abound in every good work easily because he's almighty. Amen. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you serve a supernatural God, an almighty God? Never fails. Never fails. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord for all that God is doing and has done, and he's still doing. And, you know, our God's not dead, is he? You know, a lot of stuff come out about dead God and all that stuff, and movies and all that stuff, but we know that God's not dead. We know that because he's alive in us, isn't he? Amen. If you have that this morning, you want to honor the Lord with of your tithes and offerings, we'll give you that opportunity to plant a seed. Here, Brother Roy, take mine while you're up here. Praise the Lord. So you just come, we bring our offering to the Lord, uh, and uh, just give it to him. Just worship him, and that's part of our worship. Amen. So as you come this morning, we're going to sing this old song, God's Not Dead, He's Still Alive. Amen. Man, you can help us this morning. Well, my God. Are you glad that you got God in your heart? You know, there's a little old song we used to sing it periodically. I've got the love of God in my heart. How many are born again here today? Did you know you got the love of God in you? you it's just, it ought to be easier for us to love than it is to throw a fit. It ought to be against us, our nature to throw a fit. Amen? Because the love of God lives in us. And, and, you know, that's God. I got God on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change. Let's sing just a little bit of that. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got his love, his power, and his ability. I've got the life of God. Won't you sing it to your neighbor? I've got the life of God. I'm a Christian. Amen. I've got the life of God in me. I've got his love, his power, and his ability. I've got the life of God. How about I've got the love of God? I've got the love of God in me. I've got the love of God in me. I've got his love, his power, and his ability. I've got the love of God in me. Amen. The next time you...
you get into a situation and you don't hardly know what to do, well, just remember, I've got the love of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the power of God in me. The power of God. You know, love is an awesome power, isn't it? To be able to love like Jesus is a, ph a phenomenal thing. Come on, uh, brother and sister. Bring the offering in this morning. I want to bless this good offering today. Hallelujah. I believe it is blessed. It comes from blessed hands to worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. You're such an almighty God. Such a God of the impossible. Thank you that you make things happen when no man, no man could consider being able to happen. That you are a way maker, a miracle worker. You're the light in our darkness. And you're working even when we don't even think or know that you're working. Your power is greater than anything the enemy throws at us. And because of that, we can boldly say we have the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for these gifts given today, tithes and often sown and given. Believe for dreams and, and ideas that you put in people's hearts. And many times, Lord, you've asked us to plant a seed, and that will meet need. So I just thank you, Lord, that they've given. It shall be given back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over because of your goodness and your mercy and your supernatural power. We believe we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Well, it's our pleasure today. Brother Kenny, come on this way, please. It's our pleasure today to uh, have a friend to come and minister. He and his wife, uh, back several years ago, I'm not sure exactly how many years ago, uh, took over or become the pastors of New Life Fellowship down the other side of, of uh, the wigwams. And I've heard pretty much Kenny's testimony, the tremendous testimony of what the Lord has done. And we've got Children's Church, if you feel free to allow uh, Rob and Jamie to minister to your small children. Uh, you can send them or you can keep them with you, whichever one you want. Uh, they, they'll be taught on the level uh, for them. And uh, Rob and Jamie are very, very, very good teachers, as, long as, as well as the heifers that go with them. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, Brother Kenny and Renee have, have a, I mean, three children, Kenny? Three children, two boys and a, and a daughter. How many grandchildren? Four. Four. And, and more coming? Who knows? Who knows? No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we communicated recently about uh, ministering. He wanted to share his testimony and just uh, let the Lord use him in whatever capacity he wants to. So would you make Brother Kenny Arterman welcome this morning? Thank you, Brother Philip, for allowing me to be here today. I'm going to cry a lot. I'm not an average man. I've got two handkerchiefs. Usually you have one, but I've got two. It's been on my heart for a long time to come share my testimony here. Even though I was saved 19 years ago, prior to that, Brother David South baptized me. And I could go on and on and on, but I've not had very many men in my life that I could say that I love with all my heart. And I'm here today because my heart has been not only redeemed, but it has been rebuilt in a way that I can preach the Word of God. Because even though I've not been saved all my life, I've just recently made things right in my life to be up here. Because I was not going to have to do anything. Amen. Everything that I'm going to do from this point on is going to be 100% for God. But I've not always been a Christian. And I wanted to share my testimony here today that not only I did commit adultery 19 years ago. It was not good. And I'm here to tell you today, men, that there can be a separation in your marriage that can become a crack today and be this big tomorrow. And little by little, things can happen, and that divide becomes greater. 
to the point to where you drive your car and your wife drives her car. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. But I'm here also to tell you, men, that don't start out like I did. Start out from the beginning loving your wife just like Christ loved the church. Amen? Amen. Because when you do that, everything has that tangible connection. Everything will line up because it's from God. I was blessed this morning just to come in. You guys didn't know I was here. I'm an early bird, but I, I loved hearing what you guys were sharing because it's the Word of God. And sister, what you cannot deny the Word of God. It will not only, it's like I shared at church the other day, God's goodness is for us. Amen. Nothing but you and your family. God is for the family. God first, family next. God is unified in your family. Amen? Amen. But also, I got some verses I want to share. There was, there was a lot to, to, to choose from. So I went back over again and I guess took some out. But again, the ones that blessed me, I was going to share with you first. I listened to uh, Tony Evans a lot pastor in Dallas, Texas. I don't listen to very many preachers just because I'm just telling you. I don't want to listen to anything artificial. If it's not of God, I'm not for it. David Wilkerson is a man that when I read his words, there's that welly that comes up in me that I want to run because I know it's real. And that's God's manifestation that was left on His Word. But as I was listening to Tony Evans this week, him and his son was out, and they was looking at photo albums. We got done, and he said, Dad, I noticed something in that photo album. He said, what are you talking about, son? He said, you was there with me the whole time of them 40 years. And I'm here today to tell you or ask you, has God been with you all along but you've never, never recognized him? I, I was in that setting, if you will. But I want to be humble and be found humble of his word. Amen. But... Getting back to my, to my marriage, I've had a solid rock of a wife. And not only down through the years, building back what I tore down, I'm here today to tell you men, don't start out like I did. Turn the walls down, then take the rest of your life building it back. Because it's hard. And it, my heart is in my marriage today 100%. And the blessings of God is on me just because of that. you got to get this right, then everything else falls in line. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 4.32. I'll be there just in a second. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Amen. Now that will speak to you different than it has me. But again, don't take anything for granted. Anything in life. The roof over your head, the shoes on your feet, clothes on your back. But don't take your wife for granted. Amen. Because God has put her there for a reason. And mine has been my rock. She's been hard. But it's been good for me that I can stand here today and say that I love her with all of my heart. When I first met Brother David, 
he had told me that his wife was his best friend. And I couldn't fathom that because at the time that I was at in my marriage, my wife was not my best friend. So when I acknowledge that, I'm thinking, man, this, this guy's a little strange. His wife is his best friend. How can that be? But see, Brother David had preached several messages when the pattern is right, the glory will fall. See, God's plan is 100%. When his pattern is right, the glory will fall on you and you'll give him the praise. Amen. And that's what it's done for me. I can say today that my wife is my best friend. In the world. Amen. The COVID that come across, it, it changed everybody's life. I think for a lot of it, like I say, it's an excuse for a lot of people not to have come back to church and return from it. But every man is accountable for his own actions. That one day, every man and woman is going to have to account for what he or she has done in this lifetime. Life is nothing short of a vapor here on earth. But where eternity is, is forever. I want to be right. And today I am. Because just to touch on your word, dear sister, everything in my life today is right. I have repented of every wrongdoing that I have made and made it right with God. And he couldn't let me stand on a platform because he knew all the truth wasn't in me just yet, Brother Philip. But today I can. And see, there's a free, there's a freeness in me today that wasn't in there the other day. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful. And I'm going to go and do, as I was sharing with the church the other day, many places just come out of nowhere. God knows I love to travel. It don't matter today. Where he wants me to go, I will go. Amen. Amen. In Colossians 3.19. Colossians 3.19. Husbands, love your wives and do not be embittered against them. The wife and I had got COVID back. In the winter months, locked in for 10 days. Now, if that had been 15 years ago, it had been hard. It had been hard. I can honestly say that it was most, one of the most precious times in my marriage. See, when your heart gets changed, and it's all about the heart to do right, I'm in a place and time, whatever my wife, my wife needs, I'm going to get it for her. But it was just that time of reconnecting for a man and a woman. That God had set aside, I think, that time for the art of burns to do that. Because you're busy in the rat race of life, raising kids, tending the grandkids, and do whatever it takes to build that family of what it needs to be so that God gets the glory. See, my dad was married three times and my mom four. But see, I draw that line in the sand, Brother Philip. This house is not going to divorce. This house stands. I give God the glory for that. That I can stand and say, it's all that God has done in my marriage. God gets 100% of the glory of my marriage. Even though my wife had grounds to divorce me, God asked her to back off a little while to give me time to get things right. She had grounds to, not only, I wouldn't save them, Brother Philip. But put your heart where it needs to be. I'm doing things today that I couldn't do yesterday because I'm in the alignment of what he wants me to do from this day on.
First Peter 3, 7. First Peter 3, 7. You husbands, likewise, live with your wives in an understanding way as with a weaker vessel, since she is a woman, and grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. I don't know about you. It's not a buddy system. We've got to do what we know to do in our own hearts to be right. And our obligations and duties are becoming more, seems to me, in my life or where I'm at, just to be more responsible. Not to change the subject, but thumbing through there, we sold a vehicle five weeks ago to a gentleman in Indiana, and he's got my Bible. And I think that's going to be a testimony. It's been five weeks, and I ain't got it in the mail yet. God's up to another testimony. And if you have a testimony, I just ask you to just share it. Amen. Don't be like the, the Bible that the way talks about, dust on the Bible. Don't let your testimony have a little dust on it. Because it's meant for somebody else. For a disciple that is in the works. Amen. Let's go back to Proverbs 18.22. I've got all my little tabs in Mother Bible, but it'll be easier for him when he gets it out. <laughs> Sometimes I get aggravated. If my wife, because she does too much, I just got to be honest with you. She tries to help everybody. And it wears her body down. I told you I was going to cry. But in Proverbs 18.22, it says, He who finds a wife Finds a good thing. See, I've had it good. See, a lot of Christians have had wives that do drugs, drink, and everything else. But I've not, Brother Philip. I've had that praying woman, Amen. that intercessor, Amen. that woman like Warren, yeah. in behind closed doors doing the work of God, the real work. Because today, church. Is not popular. You want to keep on doing what you do. Go places you don't need to go. And here again, I'm telling you guys, because I was once there, don't flirt with the enemy. Oh, don't flirt with the enemy. The wages of sin is death. My dad passed away a couple years ago. He was a hard man. He was a hard man. He went to church, Brother Philip, but I'm not to say, but I don't think his heart was right. But see, I've got a duty to do. And it's called one of the commandments, the Ten Commandments. I didn't know how bad my dad was and how sick he was. He never told me that he loved me, which is okay. I believe that we're only accountable for what we know. And if you're not, you're not held guilty. My dad never told me he loved me, and that's okay. I'm okay with that, 100%. But the Sunday of Father's Day, I go in and I tell him, I said, Daddy, I love you. Not knowing that Thursday morning at 2 o'clock he died. 
before that sun goes down. You better make things right because there's no guarantees of tomorrow. There's no guarantees of what tomorrow brings. That's why the sister said there earlier this morning, we don't know what's coming, but you've got to have your house right. Your house better be right. I was reading something in the Perry Stone's book the other day. For what's coming, can the believer endure what is about to come? In Proverbs 24, 3. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. Wisdom comes from God and God only. And the older I get, I want Him to pour in His wisdom to me. Why? When I was listening to a preacher in, again in Texas here recently, and every word that came out of his mouth was wisdom. See, there's no horseplay, nothing but business. God's business is to get you and your household right in the eyes of God. Amen? Amen. Honor your wives, men, like no other time. Don't take them for granted another day. Proverbs 31. Verse 10. An excellent wife who can find For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her. And he will have no lack of gain. I can honestly say that this time, whatever I'm in need of, my wife has got my back. And what I can say from this day forward, I will have her back, Brother Philip. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. Now we all know that Proverbs 31 is for that virtuous woman that I took for granted for years and I'm just now starting to build back and know the importance and the value of what a good woman is because her heart is right. Amen. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. Now I'm first to say, I go to bed early. I'm just a simple guy, but I get up early. But she does, and she does, and she does, and she does. She's got that strength, that innermost strength, that comes only from God. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. Now I could go on and read all of Proverbs 31, but the value of it is, all of Proverbs is good. I don't want to belittle any of it. But like I say, Proverbs 31 talks about 
not only the ways of the virtuous woman, but when I went on and looked a little bit further, I found a little bit more about the Proverbs 31 woman. It means becoming a good steward of what you have. It means doing the hard work to reap a harvest. See, that hard work is behind that closed door. It's where you and God alone does the most work, the best work. I know for me, if I'm in the shower or I'm in my truck of a morning, it's that long time. It's that long time that me and God does business. And I've been doing more business with my God in the last several months than I've ever done in my 55 years of living. He's getting me ready, Brother Philip. He's getting me ready to go places, do things. I love my church, New Life Faith Center. I've had it good. Nobody talks about nobody. The love is there. Our pastor that passed away several years ago, when he was in bad health, I was over at his house, and he asked me to take care of his wife. <laughs> I said, you can, you can count on it. Being done. But I've had it good because of who I face in her has been so good to me. The Bible in Proverbs 31 describes a virtuous woman as the one who leads her home with integrity, discipline, and more. All the virtues she is, is practicing are aimed at making the life of her husband better teaching her children and serving God. Be careful if you make a woman cry. Now, Kenny Hardburn didn't say that. But you listen to me. Be careful if you make a woman cry because God counts her tears. The woman came out of a man's ribs, not from his feet, to be walked on, not from his head to be superior but from his side to be equal. Under the arm to be protected and next to the heart to be loved. God is love. And I shared the other day at church it overwhelms me with God's amazing love. For the backslider to have done what they do and come back and come back and come back and come back and God takes them with his outstretched arm every time. I'm getting better at that, but if you keep screwing up, I like to bust you in the jaw. And that's just me. I want you to get straightened up and do things because when I lay my head down at night, I want there to be peace in my house. And it has not always been the case because most of the time I screwed it up because my mom always says, whatever man's a part of, he will screw it up. And I'm the one who always screwed it up. But see, it took me a long time to figure it out. 
that I had a wife that prayed. She knew how to read my mail. So men that's got a praying wife, be careful. You think you're getting by with it. God already sees what you've done. But your mail is going to get read. It's embarrassing, but you know what? God wants what is best for you and me, amen? amen? And you can go down the hard road, or you can go down the easy. I told my kids as they was growing up, I'll never pick your friends until they become negative instead of positive. And life is a choice. Every single day we make choices. Whether it be good or bad, the outcome you've got to live with. Amen. The choice is yours. Right. Also, I was listening to Brother Evans this week. And it was a man's message for the man, basically, that we are to work for God and not satisfy this culture. Now that spoke volumes to me. That we're not to make each person happy. That happiness comes from God above and no other way. To have the true, genuine happiness that comes only from the Father that grants us with His happiness. Amen. The COVID test was a test to see if you was negative or positive. Amen? Amen. But this week, it spoke to me in the faith of being the same. If you was asked the question today, is your faith negative or positive, 100%, what would be your answer? And just like the brother was sharing there earlier this morning before church had started, every day you have got to not only be mindful, but every day is a new day. Your mind has got to be renewed every day. Every day. I know mine does. But again, men of this church, men of this time, I ask you just to search your heart. Because in my house, until my heart was right, my house wasn't right. I've got kids now and I've got grandkids. And my responsibility is much greater. I've done a lot of things different than I've done them before. Stop the truck in the morning. Walk around this house praying for it, Brother Philip, that no enemy come nigh their dwelling. We're living in such a different time now that not only church is unpopular, but we've got a different work than we had yesterday. So like when you come through that door today, I hope you have changed a little bit more before you go out. Because that's what God has done to me. He's changed me. He's changed me a lot down through the years, but He's changing me a whole lot right now. A whole lot right now. He's got a lot for us to do. And needs a lot of helpers. I was sharing with Brother David a few weeks ago that the remnant of the church is getting smaller. The work of the individual in the church today is coming so much greater. The world is such a dark place. But the remnant still stands at the task at hand. 
that we have to do. I just want to thank again this church for letting me share my testimony. I hope it's touched somebody's heart today. I hope everybody's house has been made right because of the peace and the love that can come into your home through God's graceful hand can change it for the better. Amen. I know it has mine. And again, I thank you for letting me come and share my testimony. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day that you have made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it, Father. That, Father, you have had it on my heart for some time to come to this church and to share my testimony, what it has meant to me, Father, for what you have done for my marriage, Father, that through you, you get all the glory, Father. And from this day forward, it will ever be changed with you getting the thanks. And today, Father, I ask you just to touch the hearts of this house today, Father. Let them be renewed, Father, and touched by only your hand. The hand of God that changes everything in the direction of every man, Father, that comes through you. And Father, I just again thank you for your hand, your hand of mercy that's been placed upon me and my family, Father, but for what you're about to do in these days to come. Bless your people in this house. Bless this word. Bless your people. And all these things we pray in your son's name. And amen. In your heart this morning. I just wondered with every eye closed in this house today, uh, perhaps there's something going on in your life, going on in your home. And uh, you just keep kind of treading time, treading like treading water. I, I just want you to know it's not just time that's going to fix it. God's the only one that can fix it. And until you get on your face before God and truly apologize to him and your better half or the other half, it's just not going to work right for you. So for our families, our children, our grandchildren's sake, please, 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 gentlemen, Make sure that you're doing an honorable thing in the sight of the Lord. You know, Brother Kenny has been bold enough to bring out the difficulties, and, and I appreciate him doing that, not just hiding it. And it's, it's not easy to, to repair a marriage like that, but it can be done. And with God's help, it will be done. But... Time won't do it by itself. You've got to get right with God. And you've got to search for God's repentance, for God to forgive you. And when you get things right, like he said, you get things right, it'll work. But it's not going to work as long as you're wrong. Either way, male or female, you need to repent of your life, repent of what you've done in your life. God's here to help you. He's here. He wants your home to be blessed. There's nothing to an advantage to God for your home to be torn. It's disadvantage in every way. And God wants to bless you, and if you're not right with him and you're not right under his directions, I'll just be honest with you. I know a lot of people today just live together. God can't just bless that. It's just, it's, he can't bless it. So you need to fix that so God can bless your union. Can I get an amen this morning? You've got to fix that. And we've, we've, been, we've dealt with a lot of that. And, and God's blessings are coming upon those who are doing it right. And they'll continue to. So please consider 
Make it right with the Lord. And set the standard before your children. Anything you teach your children, any word you speak to your children, will be settled or destroyed by your lifestyle. You can't tell children how to live their life and then you live wrong. You can't con 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 convince them to do the right thing if you're doing the wrong thing. So do it right. Amen. Do it right. Is anything on the heart this morning? You blessed today? So good to have New Life Fellowship Church with us today. And a lot of people we've known throughout the years don't hardly get to see them. But today we want to share the communion service with all of our brothers and sisters. 